Yes, Purnima, I think we should start now. Okay, I'll start my uh, presentation. So good afternoon, everyone. I'll be talking about this topic about uh, that is trademarks. So in my previous sessions, I have discussed about patents, what are the statutory uh, features which are required for being eligible for a patent or non-eligible for a patent. Like that, I have discussed different uh, criteria. So in that continuation of the series, I'll be talking about another type of intellectual property, which is known as trademark. So next slide, please. So trademarks is nothing but it's a simple design word or phrase, which is capable of distinguishing goods or services of one person from those of others. So what exactly do you mean by trademark? So most of the time we have come across different types of trademarks in our day-to-day -day life. So like if you take a packet of chips or any kind of uh, uh, produce or uh, uh, services, like uh, it, it can be a hospitality services or uh, let's say lodging or hotel services, or let's say uh, even if you are going to book a ticket, by any of these uh, well-known apps, which is Make My Trip or Ease My Trip or any kind of uh, uh, website, all of these have some kind of trademarks, which is nothing but a symbol design or word, which is cap capable of distinguishing that particular service from another, uh, what do you say, service, which is offered by a fellow competitor. So in like all types of intellectual property, the most important uh, criteria which is required for a trademark is that it should not have been uh, priorly used by anybody else. Uh, for example, if it has already been used by someone, let's say even if that person has not registered, uh, he will not have a very good strong position in the court of law, but nevertheless, he can always oppose your trademark application saying that he has been a uh, prior first using this particular trademark. So when we talk about trademark, there are three different types of symbols. One is R, TM, and SN. So R re uh, refers to registered trademark, TM re uh, refers to unregistered trademark, and SM re uh, refers to service mark. So when we're talking about, let's say, ITC or Kakatiya or any other, uh, let's say, Hotel Marriott or uh, some other kind of uh, hospitality, uh, services which have been offered by uh, different uh, industries. So each of this particular industry will be having their own distinct and unique way of differentiating themselves from the competitor's services. So trademark is nothing but that kind of a distinct USP which differentiate saying that this good or this services which are offered by so-and-so company is different and it is their own. So it is like trying to uh, give a monopoly over the kind of services which they are offering. Next slide, please. So what is a trademark? Uh, enter. Yeah, the term trademark is often used to refer to a service mark, but the words have two distinct requirements. Next. Uh, can you uh, just let all the... Uh, yes. No, no, previously. Yeah. 
so when we are talking about a trademark it can also refer a service mark or it can also uh, refer a uh, let's say an under, uh, a symbol which is used for a goods and services also so for example if you want to identify and distinguish that particular goods and services of which are manufactured by one particular organization then you have a trademark a trademark it is an intangible asset so it is like uh, let's say you have a free to lay uh you have that particular different way in which that lays is been written uh that font size that color or in which that particular uh what do you say the product has been marketed uh, in fact you also have a way in which the product is been uh packaged so that comes under trade dress so when you talk about a trademark a trademark includes that particular symbol which uniquely identifies that particular product for example uh the most uh, very easily you can identify is let's say mcdonalds uh mcdonalds has a trademark of that uh, funny guy uh, who is a clown like figure and he ha uh, he also uh, has one tagline saying that i am loving it and that is a registered trademark similarly for kfc kfc also has its own distinctive trademark so this is uh this is how you identify what is a trademark next slide please so uh can you please uh, yeah so uh, what the, what distinguishes a service mark from a trademark is a service mark is that word or symbol which has been used to identify the services as opposed to the goods so it indicates the source from which the services are being uh, generated even if that source is unknown for example when uh, when we say uh But let's say uh, we are talking about this uh, Amul milk. Uh, this is uh, this refers to a kind of milk which is marketed under the trademark of Amul Industries. So when you talk about uh, that uh, this particular good, it can be uh, what do you say originated either from uh, Hyderabad or from any other dairy which is similar. But in order to uh, what do you say market the good or that particular uh, what do you say essential product under that but uh, under amul uh, trademark name it has to conform to the particular rules and regulations which has been uh, what do you say pre uh, determined by amul now uh, when we talk about service mark when uh, what uh, what can you say about service mark let's say we are talking about a pr a production of a kind of uh, what do you say uh, hospitality services let's say uh when we are talking about a chain of hospitality services uh let's say uh, it, it's a huge uh, thing like when you're talking about laundry or uh, any uh, boarding and lodging or any kind of uh, what do you say uh, hotel and establishment or any kind of services which are basically uh, used to cater the needs of the people the service mark refers to that particular symbol which will identify the services of that person let's say when you're talking about uh, services of hospitality uh, the services of uh, let's say one hotel chain itc will be different from another hotel chain let's say marriott or something like that so that is how you distinguish a service mark next slide please uh, so here when we are trying to uh, no the next slide so uh, when uh, when we are trying to distinguish between a trademark and a service mark we also need to see whether that mark meets the criteria for both so if the trademark can meet the criteria for being even a service mark then it can be designated as so and so but sometimes what happens is a trademark can only be referred for a good and a trademark can only be referred for a service mark and vice versa uh, can you please uh, share the entire slide yeah so in this uh, particular example which i would like to share is tiffany and co it's a service mark for a brand of tiffany and company which is used to identify the services of providing online jewelry and accessories so you have this tiffany.com which is an online website by which you can procure their goods and services from uh, this tiffany.co website but tiffany and co is also a trademark for their jewelry which is produced by that company tiffany and co so this particular trademark can also uh, work as a service mark as well i hope this point is clear the next slide please 
So a trademark can also include service marks such as used for banking, education, finance, insurance, real estate, entertainment, repairs, transport, conveying news, information, etc. For example, when you're talking about certification of trademarks, uh, this is actually certified by a proprietor to say that it indicates that particular geographical origin. For example, when we talk about uh, produce, that is food uh, certification, uh, for example, Agmark or Woolmark. Woolmark refers to that kind of goods which refers to using an authentic type of 100% wool, which is uh, registered under 114 con 40 countries and licensed to few companies, which will assuredly adhere to the six uh, strict standards. So uh, this kind of Agmark or Woolmark uh, cannot be used as a trademark for a particular company. So this will be uh, combinedly owned by the stakeholders, that is whichever particular company or a licensee which is uh, uh, which is adhering to the strict rules and uh, standards which are set uh, right by the Woolmark company, they will be the owner of the mark. So there is no one particular owner. The it is a it is a kind of a a certified trademark. It is just to show that, let's say, if, uh, if you talk about egg mark, egg mark means it is, uh, it is, uh, it is, uh, what do you say, uh, symbolizing the purity of a, of a product, of a food product. Next slide, please. So what is a collective mark? A collective mark is that mark which distinguishes goods and services of the members of association from the marks of other undertakings. So who owns a collective mark? It can be owned by the manufacturers, producers, suppliers, and uh, trade uh, traders. So for example, when you talk about, uh, let's say different uh, institutions, let's say Institute of Chartered Accountants, or let's say the Broad, Board of uh, Cricketers Association, the BCI or something like that, they will also have a particular uh, trademark. So that will be the mark which will uh, identify the services of their particular association. So that cannot be, uh, or what do you say, the monopoly of a single person. It is the association itself. It is the professional body. So it will have its particular uh, mark, which is known as a collective mark. So there are three kinds of uh, uh, marks which I have uh, described now. One I have discovered uh, described is the trademark, service mark, and collective mark. And how a trademark can also function as a service mark and vice versa. Next slide, please. Now I'm talking about what are the well-known marks. The well-known marks are, for example, Coca-Cola for soft drink, Soberlone for triangle-shaped chocolates, uh, and different kinds of trade names, like for Godrej furniture, refrigerators, compactors, GE, etc. These are all well-known trademarks. So what do you uh, what do you mean by well-known trademarks? Well-known trademarks are those trademarks which by their, uh, what do you say, by the way of their usage, have become so well-known and popular among the people that it is uh, not very easily, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, forgotten or anything like that. It is not easy to uh, actually pass them off as, uh, an, or as their own. Next slide, please. So for example, now I'll be telling you what is the criteria of a trademark. So when we talk about a trademark, uh, we should know how it can be protected under trademark and what cannot be protected under trademark. So the right to use trademark in relations to goods and services are protected. For example, if a trademark consists of several parts, uh, when I'm talking about, let's say the same example, which I took the MACD, the MACD trademark includes the entire way in which McDonald's is written, that particular figurine of that clown, plus that uh, caption, which says that I'm loving it. So this, this or uh, the trademark of MACD consists of all these uh, several parts which constitute the protection of a trademark as a whole. And what cannot be, uh, what do you say, protected as a trademark, state emblems, official hallmarks, emblems of intergovernmental organizations cannot be used as trademark because they are a part of public property. So they, 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 that, that is uh, owned by public. So uh, in the sense, it is statutory property. It cannot be owned by any individual or private organization. Next slide, please. So now, what is the difference between using a trade name versus a service mark? A trade name can be registered as a trademark or a service mark, but only when used as a trademark or a service mark. 
So for example, Google is also used as a service mark to identify the Google's online store, but Google also re represents the trade name. So nowadays it has become so common uh, that we, when we talk about search, we say that Google Karo. So it is, uh, what, what is happening here is, although Google, that particular trade name, has been used to distinctly uh, distinguish the trade uh, services or the particular kind of niche services which are provided by Google, uh, it is also registered under a business entity name called Google Inc. So uh, that it is defined by the way it is used. So a trade name that is a Google can also be used as a service mark. It can also be used as a trademark and vice versa. Next slide, please. So what a trademark isn't? A trademark is not a trade, a trade name. It's not a business entity name. It's not a name which ne does not necessarily qualify for a trademark or a service mark registration. For example, any name used by a person to identify a business or a vocation of such person. For example, when we talk about uh, Tata Gold, so nobody will uh, have, uh, uh, people wouldn't have thought, hello? Hello? Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can unmute yourself, uh, but uh, if there are no questions, please uh, mute yourself. I'm sorry, Ponima, I'll take care of that. Please okay. Yeah, so uh, here what I'm trying to tell is, for example, when we're uh, talking about Tata T Gold, uh, let's say we, uh, that is a particular trademark for a produce or uh, uh, which is a good, which is tea. Nobody will think that a tea brand or a tea will be uh, trademarked under the name of Tata Tea Gold. So in the same, uh, what do you say, uh, brand name of Tata, uh, there are different, different types of, uh, what do you say, tea varieties. So this refers to uh, the kind of it does not refer to that particular trademark or uh, sorry, the service or uh, the good which they are talking about. So it is a it is a name which is used to identify that particular good from that particular company and distinguishing it from others. So let's say we are talking about Hindustan lever products. When you when we are talking about Hindustan lever products, uh, if they are having like Unilever, that will distinguish its. Uh, soap or other kinds of products from other kind of uh, people who are manufacturing or in the same, uh, what do you say, category. So a trademark is nothing but the thing which is adopted to identify the purpose or behind that particular companies and goods or services. Whereas a trade name is something which is used for identifying the company from the rest. Next. So what is the significance of trademark to a business? A trademark actually forms the, an identification mark to a business. It is referring to the proof of existence and ownership. And it also helps in reaching the vast audience in a better way. So when we, when we talk about, let's say, uh, a particular trademark, Apple, that is that which is given in this uh, screen as well, MACD, Tata Motors, or uh, A, when we talk about... Uh, Amazon or Nike or something like that. Uh, this refer refers to that particular goods and services, which is uh, giving, uh, what do you say, that niche or that edge over that particular uh, pro uh, product or produce or service, which is offered by that particular company. It helps in, uh, it, it forms a valuable asset it does not expire because it all depends on the way you're using it. And, and when you keep on paying the registration fee, it will keep on be there till that time. It is an inexpensive way of protecting and it protects from unfair uh, trade practices. So I think there is a question here. Let me have a look at it. How does interoperability of trademark work? If I have to use trademark of someone, what is the clearance I need to take for it? So uh, could you... Uh, care to uh, elaborate uh, more sir uh, sure so one of the scenarios that like there's a company operating outside india and uh, they are doing some business over there and they are they don't have a legal presence in india right so if i have to like use their trademark uh, for some work here 
uh, which is official. So is there what kind of a contract that I need to sign or what is the permission I need to take from that company or is there anything from the government I need to do for using the trademark? So when you're talking about using that particular trademark or something like that, first of all, you need to uh, sign some kind of memorandum of understanding so that they, they do not uh, have any objection. And secondly, uh, when you're talking about uh, using that kind of goods in India or let's say services, definitely there will be some kinds of alternative or competitive goods which have the similar presence in the market. So even if you launch or you're trying to use that kind of good in India, let's say if you're trying to, uh, if it actually uh, infringes upon somebody else's right, they can oppose saying that you're trying to eat my market share or something like that. So the, uh, the best thing is you need to actually uh, get uh, get the kind of clearance from it, then only you can use the trademark in India. So let's say when you're trying to, uh, for example, I'll give you an example of a book, uh, when it's Harper Collins or any kind of thing. So there are Indian publishers which actually sign a license or something like that, and they'll be marketing the books under that trademark also. So they do not face any official, uh, what do you say, uh, opposition or something like that because they have all done via that memorandum of understanding and they have a kind of an understanding which is in writing so that is a kind of thing you need to take so when we're talking about uh, trademark these are the points which you need to take care in mind so i hope i've answered your question yeah sure. thank you thank you for that yeah and uh, one more uh, thing which uh, mr madhav has asked can you highlight the trademarks relevance to academicians, researchers, and inventions. For example, when we talk about, uh, let's say when you have made any particular apparatus uh, or, uh, or a, a particular kind of a produce, or uh, let's say you have made a, a unique kind of an article, you uh, want to actually produce in greater numbers. So you want to identify that particular good which is uh, produced by you or that particular company or that particular organization in a different manner. So that is why you will trademark that particular good or uh, services saying that it, it depends in this particular class. It falls in this particular class, so it can either come under, uh, you register the trademark. So mostly for researchers and for uh, academicians, uh, they do not use much of trademarks in general. They mostly use patents because whatever the inventions which are used, by uh, which are uh, discovered by in, uh, by inventors, it is uh, mostly of a techno legal improvement. It is something which is technologically binding. It is improvement in the technical field. So here we do not have some ki that kind of distinction. When you talk about trademark, it need not be a technological improvement. It can merely be a kind of a product or something which sets apart it from, uh, let's say, competitors. I hope this question has been answered. Thank Mother, you. is it fine? Yeah, yeah, fair enough, we can go ahead. Okay. So uh, the next thing is, I just wanted to give this uh, particular information with respect to uh, what are the types of uh, valuation trademarks have. This is an old slide, so it is 2018. I'm sure the value of Amazon, Apple, Google, and Samsung have increased by numerous folds. So what we need to say is when uh, what I'm trying to say here is when you're trying to uh, take over merger and acquisition of a of any particular uh, company or uh, you can go to that same slide please then uh, the one slide which was talking next slide no no uh, not the back slide yes this one so when we're talking about the valuation of trademarks it is very much important for example when you are doing some kind of merger and acquisition of uh, any particular company the value of the company will be uh, based on the type of intellectual property or the portfolio which it is holding. So the portfolio can be in the form of design, it can be in the form of patent, it can be in the form of trademark. So each of this particular intellectual property will be valued with respect to the brand presence and how it reaches the particular market. So based on that, the merger and acquisitions like when you're trying to purchase any particular company or something like that the valuation will be there so when we try to hear that so and so company has been taken over or has been merged into let's say x company so uh, this is the valuation which has gone like you they value the intellectual property and then they 
uh, sell or they merge the company with the parent company or a new company or form a new entity as such. So trademarks are very, very valuable intellectual property. This is what I'm trying to say. So can I register my trademark? Yes. So yes, you can register your trademark if you are using the trademark. If it is acceptable, it does not have any kind of an obnoxious or objectionable word or phrase or does not hurt the religious sentiments of or public morality or uh, if it is distinctive, if you are able to identify or make it different from that particular, uh, what do you say, other kinds of goods and services in the same class, then you can register the mark. Now, I'll just give you an example. <coughs> Excuse me. When we talk about trademarks, when uh, trademarks usually are uh, registered under some kind of classification, which is known as NIS classification. The NIS classification is an international classification which uh, which has actually divided the classes of goods and, and the type of marks which fall under these classes of goods. For example, there are 45 classes of goods and services which come under the NIS classification. And let's say when we're talking about, say, uh, something which is used for as an apparel brand or something like that comes under X classification of uh, trademark. So when you're trying to register your mark, uh, let's say if it's a McDonald, it's a product which is used for, uh, uh, what do you say, consumption or uh, eatable or something like that. There is a separate kind of classification for uh, the, those kind of trademarks. So when can I register my mark? If it is in use, when you are able to show you, you are prior or, or you are having priority over using the trademark. If it is, if, if it is distinctive from... Uh, other kinds of uh, trademarks, then only you can register the mark. Next slide, please. So when can you acquire or lose the trademarks? So by common law, you, they, when you're using it, you are acquiring the use of it, like by use. By constant use, you have that particular trademark. But if you want to enforce your trademark, you should always register. Then only you are able to enforce it in a court of law. So when do you, uh, how can you uh, safeguard your uh, trademark? You can either go by the national route, that, that is the Trademarks Act 1999 is the Indian legislation which takes care of uh, the trademarks or protection of trademarks in India or the regional route which talks about the harmonization of the internal market uh, and the official name is EU Trademark Office. So uh, you, when you go for different kinds of routes like when you're going to file in African and other countries so you go by the Aripo route if you're going by the European you go by the Europe route but if you want to go by the international route there is something called Madrid system which is the international system of uh, what do you say entering into the trademark uh, protection uh, it is similar to the PCT or the Paris convention when we talk uh, about the patent uh, protection these are the different ways in which you can uh, enter and uh, safeguard your trademark. So when you do not use your trademark, when you don't renew, when you do not safeguard your trademark, the trademark rights are lost per se. Next slide, please. So here I'm just talking about the Indian trademark offices, where the trademark offices and what are the jurisdiction of trademark offices in India. So you have uh, based on the uh, geographical uh, locations of the different uh, states, uh, there are uh, five trademark uh, offices, branch offices of the trademark registry that is Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, New Delhi and Chennai. So uh, Chennai has uh, jurisdiction of AP, Telangana, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Union Territories of Pondicherry, Lakshadweep. So similarly, different uh, states come under their respective jurisdictions. Next slide, please. Now, I'd like to talk a bit more about what is international registration or the Madrid system. So the Madrid system is the international registration of a trademark. So it is a cost effective and a convenient way of registering and managing trademarks worldwide. So you can file a single application and pay one set of fees and it can you can protect your trademark in let's say up to 123 countries. So modify you can modify and renew your ex and expand your global trademark portfolio through one centralized system. Now, uh, like there was a question to say that uh, a trademark which was uh, already uh, there in a uh, foreign country and uh, you, you do not have its presence in India. 
So what you can always do is if that particular uh, trademark uh, comes under the statutory requirements of like uh, you can always go via the Madrid route and enter India as well or you can file a separate trademark in India as well. So uh, when you know about uh, the Madrid system, you can uh, with, uh, with, you can also uh, enter into India by filing a single application. So this is administered by the International Bureau of WIPO, which is located in Geneva, Switzerland. And India also is a part of the Madrid system. Next slide, please. So uh, I'll not go much into the classification system because this is the Vienna system of classification and all this is uh, too much into detail. But I would like to talk about the Indian uh, perspective. Next slide, please. So this is what I was talking about the needs system of classification when we are trying to identify which goods or service or the classes under which our particular goods and services come under uh, for registering the trademarks or service mark. So you have a total of 45 classes, which is 1 to 34 is for goods and class 35 to 45 fall for services. When you're trying to uh, register your particular trademark, so it will, it will either come in 1 to 45 of these particular goods and services. So uh, India also very recently became the member of the Nice Agreement with effect of sept, uh, with effect from September 7, 2019. So the Nice system of classification and the Madrid system of classification uh, of uh, registration is applicable to India uh, because India is a member country. Next slide, please. Now I will be explaining what is the trademark procedure. Uh, in India. So when we talk about uh, trademark procedure, the first thing is before filing any trademark, you will first do a search. You will try to make a search in, let's say, not only Google search, you will also do a search in the proprietary trademark uh, databases, which uh, which is the Indian, pro uh, Indian uh, patent office also has its own trademark, uh, what do you say, database. Uh, then USPTO has its own trademark database. Then you have different... Uh, what do you say, uh, free and uh, what do you say, paid uh, way of searching your trademark to know whether it is already there or not in uh, in use. So if it is already there in use, that particular uh, person or that, uh, what do you say, service provider will tell you that this particular trademark can be opposed once filed, uh, an application is filed. So what you do is you try to add or tweak in certain uh, let's say you change the font a little bit or you add a little uh, different variation in color or uh, try to make it as distinctive as possible so that there is no uh, infringement of others' rights. So once you uh, zero down or narrow down on that particular trademark name, then you will uh, file with the appropriate, uh, what do you say, statutory forms, you will file the trademark application. So once the trademark application is filed you have a trademark uh, application number which is generated and this particular uh, application is then taken up by the trademark registry uh, wherein there are uh, what do you see statutory officers or trademark or uh, i mean the registrar and the examiners trademark examiners who will be reviewing your application trademark application you, they will be seeing what are all the uh, documents which you have submitted with your trademark application uh, let's say, for example, uh, you want to uh, prove that your uh, trademark has been new, has been in use since 2016. So, if you have sold your product by uh, using any uh, by using um, that that trademark, so you will need to furnish that bill or the re uh, receipt saying that under this particular head from this particular uh, timeline, I have been marketing my goods under this particular name. So that is the way that you are showing that your mark is already under prior use. So once uh, this examination of the uh, trademark application is done by the trademark examiner, if there is no objections, it will be accepted. If there is objections, it is not uh, accepted. And there is, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, objections have been uh, what do you say, generated for your trademark application. So once the objections are being, uh, what do you say, raised for your application, you need to actually respond to those objections uh, within a particular statutory frame of time. And then once these objections have been overcome, uh, it will be accepted. So before acceptance, you are given a 
a chance to present your case in front of the uh, trademarks uh, registry that is the examiner of that particular application will review your uh, application with respect to the objections which have been uh, issued and based on the response whatever you have filed uh, they will have uh, they will try to get some kind of clarifications from you and then uh, if the clarifications are uh, what do you say suitable and they overcome the objections they are accepted but let's say once it is uh, accepted uh, you have uh, let's say i'm talking about the left uh, panel which you are talking once it is accepted the publication uh, in the in the trademark journal happens after uh, four to five months and then there is a waiting period whether any opposition can be filed or not so if there is any opposition is filed by any third party then you will proceed with the opposition uh, proceedings that is similarly uh, the opposite party will be presenting some kind of uh, what do you say uh, written uh, evidence and uh, what do you say documents which prove that their uh, uh, they are the prior use users of that particular trademark and then you will also as an applicant be given a chance to give your counter uh, documents and your response to that objections so if uh, this particular if uh, the what do you say the case of facts is more towards your end that is if it is proven that uh, you hold all the documents and uh, and you are the legitimate owner of the trademark then you will be given the right to use that trademark by, uh, by uh, the trademark office wherein the trademark examiner will squash that opposition and the registration for the trademark is, gra is granted so once the trademark registration is granted you need to renew your trademark registration for every 10 years so this is how from pm that is unregistered trademark you come to the registered trademark so i hope this point is clear if there is any questions you can please ask Madhav, I think my uh, presentation is not visible. Yeah, just a minute. Then okay. it got stopped by itself. No problem. Visible now? Yes, I think it's gone too forward. So I was talking about the place where, uh, yes, yeah. So if there are no questions, I will go to the next slide. What are the statutory requirements for trademark application filing? So uh, under the national route, uh, the Trademarks Act 1999 and the Trademark Rules 2017 is the one uh, we, which is used to file applications in India. So the application fee is half in, uh, in respect to uh, individuals or startups or small enterprises. And 10% less fee, fees are charged when they are filed online as opposed to offline application. So the form which is used to file a trademark application is known as TMA and the mode of filing is either online or offline. It can be typewritten or uh, printed in uh, Hindi or English. And what are all the other documents which are needed? You need to have an affidavit testifying the use of your trademark along with supporting documents. That is the statement of user. Next slide, please. Uh, you should also have a representation of the mark. That is uh, by using an eight by eight uh, centimeters. If it's a 3D mark, three different kinds of use. If it's a sound mark, an MP3 format not exceeding 30 seconds. Then you need to uh, file it in the appropriate jurisdiction that is where the principle of business is located in India. So whether or not you need an agent uh, or not, you need to give an appropriate, uh, what do you say, uh, authorization to that particular agent. So if you are filing on your own, you can file, no problem. But if you are filing via an agent, the agent should be given the authorization. And you should also give an address of service that is under rule 17, which includes a postal and a valid email ID, wherein all the postal and the other uh, correspondence uh, can be shared with the particular applicant in due course. 
next uh, next slide please <coughs> so what is meant by trademark trademark under section 21m refers to a device brand heading ticket label signature word numerical shape goods or packaging or combinations of colors or combination thereof so this is the statutory uh, definition under section 21m of the trademarks uh, indian trademarks act 1999 so this uh, a picture which i have uh, taken from google this shows the different kinds of trademarks of different kinds of products which we use in our day to day life next slide please so what is a trademark under section 21zb a trademark refers to that particular mark which is capable of graphically represented which is capable of distinguishing the goods and services from one of one company from the other so it can also include the shape of the goods their packaging the combination of colors so on and so forth so unless and otherwise told a trademark shall include reference to collective mark certification trademark so section 2 2 includes a collective mark and a certification trademark as well next slide please so section 21e refers to the certification trademark which i have already referred to uh it certify it refers to the certification of a proprietor of a mark with respect to the origin material mode of manufacture of goods or performance of services so if it is not certified that means it is not a mark at all but if it is a certification trademark it certifies these uh, particular goods and services next slide please so what is a collective mark collective mark is that mark which is uh combinedly or collectively owned by a particular uh, group of uh, what do you say individuals who are actually uh, collectively having the ownership of that particular mark for example a uh, partnership refers to not being a partnership within the meaning of 1932 uh, that is the indian partnership act which is a proprietor of mark for example when you are talking about the collective mark which is wool mark or something like that they have uh this uh, this is collectively owned by let's say a particular group of proprietors or some uh, somebody who is actually having uh, who is following these rules and this norm uh, or these uh, what do you say the rules and regulations which are put forth by that particular company next slide please so what are the types of trademarks the trademarks include service marks collective marks certification marks and there are non conventional marks also like olfactory or smell marks sound or uh, uh, oral marks which is the mgm lions roar which you see when uh, we see some kind of uh, english movies or something like that the lion roar of mgm uh, you have 3d shapes you have moving marks then you have uh, marks which uh, refer to some brands like nike adidas so and so on and so forth so you talk about trademarks they actually are there in every um, what do you say uh, part or every uh, nook and corner of your life here so you're using some kind of trademark product uh, in your life in your day to day life next slide please so these are other further examples of a trademarks next yeah so why you need to have your particular uh, trademark to be distinctive when we are talking about distinctive it has to be fanciful or it has to be coined for example when you are talking about xerox for copier xerox is actually for a brand of uh, xerox machines but now it has become so common that people say photocopy instead of photocopy they say xerox so xerox means uh, just photo stamp so that is how it has become so common so the distinctiveness of xerox has been dropped down another example is kodak for cameras nobody expects that a camera will be uh, given a trademark which is known as kodak so the more fanciful or coined coined it is the more distinctive it is so it has to be arbitrary for example apple for computers that the silver half eaten apple which is there nobody will know that it can be used to identify or uh, a, a brand of computers and next thing is samsung for televisions uh, so on and so forth when you talk about suggestive 
uh, trademarks. That is Microsoft. When you talk about Microsoft, it is the kind of software which is used for microcomputers. If we talk about Airbus, let's say three Airbus 300 or Boeing or something like that, it is a trademark for, let's say, different types of airplanes. When we talk about destructive kinds of uh, trademarks, we talk about, let's say, fruit and nuts for ice cream. Uh, when we talk about homemakers for housekeeping services. And when, when does a trademark become generic? When you're trying to use uh, something which is no commonly uh, known. For example, uh, chocolates are also known as toffees or candy. So if you try to use candy for a particular uh, brand of chocolates which you're manufacturing, then it becomes generic. How will you uh, differentiate between your brand of chocolates from, let's say, competitor's brand? So that's how the more fanciful, arbitrary, suggestive, and descriptive your trademark is, the more uh, difficult it becomes for uh, any uh, third party to infringe it. Next slide, please. So what is a good trademark? A good trademark is distinctive. It is inherent. It is acquired, not deceptively similar, and it's honestly adopted or coined. So it is uh, not similar to the existing mark. And before adopting the new mark, it is always advisable to have a search uh, conducted to avoid unnecessary litigation. So that's how I explained in the trademark procedure. Next slide, please. So what do you mean by deceptively similar? So deceptively similar means it should not be similar to an other mark which is already in use and it, is, it should not deceive or cause confusion among the customers. For example, when we talk about, uh, let's say, um, uh, when, you're, when you're talking about uh, Sunfeast noodles or something like that, uh, when you're talking about the tastemaker masala, so when you're talking about the uh, tastemaker masala, that is a proprietary of uh, Maggie. So when uh, the if you're talking about Sunfeast or any other brand, so that has to actually make a brand uh, its particular product, which is un coming under the same instant noodles in a different way. So you cannot have the similar uh, kind of uh, packaging or something for Maggie uh, packet uh, as compared to the Sunfeast. So because uh, if uh, because Maggie has been in use for quite some time and it's a brand. Uh, which has been protected by Nestle and it is trademarked under uh, Maggie for several reasons and the two minute noodle or whatever that particular uh, tagline which has been given for Maggie is being known for consumers. If let's say a new brand is trying to introduce its own kind of uh, instant noodles, it has to come under the bracket which is not very similar to Maggie or any other well-known brand. So it should not be deceptively similar. Next slide, please. <coughs> so for example, when you talk about deceptively similar, these are the examples. When you're having about Nike. So the right side is talking about hike. So hike is deceptively similar to Nike. So you cannot have this kind of a trademark. Uh, well, uh, let's say you're talking about a life boy. You cannot have something like fat boy or something like that. When you talk about KFC, you cannot have KFG. When you're talking about uh, Puma, you cannot have Faun or something like that because this particular uh, symbol which is shown in, on the slide now, it is very similar to the Puma brand which is trademarked. So you cannot have such kind of uh, trademarks as uh, uh, protected. So what can be the grounds for refusal? The grounds for refusal for the trademark can be uh, if they are very descriptive, if they use geographical names, if they are generic, if they are open to public, if it causes confusion, if it hurts religious sentiments, if it talks only about technical shapes, if it is deceptively similar to an earlier mark, or if it uses commonly chemical known non-proprietary names, like when we are talking about those chemical names which are used in uh, chemistry and all. It conflicts with personality rights, so on and so forth. These are the grounds for uh, refusal. So there are three, basically three different kinds of sections. You have sections 9, 10, 11, and you also have which are absolutely uh, absolute grounds of refusal. You have uh, relative grounds of refusal. Next slide, please. So the absolute grounds of refusal are section 9, which refer to uh, those kinds of trademarks which are devoid of any distinctive character that is not capable of distinguishing the goods and services of one person from another. 
for example a naturalistic reproduction of uh, goods that is images of fish for live animals which comes under class 31 or if you are talking about pocket stitching designs which talks about various different kinds of clothing including jeans which comes under class 25 so on and so forth next slide please uh, under section 9b we you also have those kind of marks which serve to designate the kind of quality quantity or intended purpose values geographical origin and the time of production of goods for example you cannot have pollutionometer for uh, uh, instruments for pollution measurement which is uh, talking about uh, pulpy uh, fruta which is applied under uh, class 32 you cannot have air conditioning with respect to air conditioning apparatus or installation services and so on and so forth you cannot have 1 kg registered as a trademark for confectionery and sweets you cannot have juicy for uh, let's say a uh, bra uh, brand of juices and uh, for example when you're talking about bookstore food court or cyber cafe or something like that you need to have that kind of trademark which is not uh, very uh, deceptively similar for example the most common uh, known uh, trademarks in this uh, field will be cafe coffee day and uh, starbucks so nobody will actually identify this uh, particular uh, will confuse a uh, cafe coffee day and starbucks because they both belong to the same uh, what do you say services which uh, provide gourmet coffee but they are distinctive from each other so th this th they have identified themselves and made themselves distinct as a result of their use hence it is known as a well-known trademark uh, can you uh, go to the next slide so if it if you're conflicting with a well-known trademark then that kind of a trademark cannot be registered because it has become so substantially similar or used to to the substantial se uh, segment of public that uh, the goods and services which use that particular mark are likely to be indicating a connection to the course of trade or rendering of services so you cannot use such kind of trademark which is very very uh, similar to that kind of well-known trademark let's say hi uh, nike for hi or uh, let's say uh, kfc for kfg or something like that you cannot use those kind of well-known trademarks because they have already been used uh, if you use kfg also no a person who goes to a particular shop to buy that let's say that kind of burger he will not uh, uh, uh be in a position to distinguish very distinctively by the way it is marketed like if they are passing off kfg as kfc then people will be thinking that it is kfc only so you the, such kind of marks are not allowed to register they are refused next slide please so section 9 to refers to a mark cannot be registered if it is of a nature such as to deceive the public or cause confusion if it comprises of matter which like it is likely to hurt religious uh, uh, sensibilities of a class of citizens for example if you are trying to use lord ganesha's or any other uh, devotional uh, uh, entities uh, name uh, in footwear or let's say uh, any kind of uh, apparel or in a what do you say in a disparaging manner such things will not be allowed uh, scandalous or obscene matter uh, prohibition of using of emblems and names are uh, prevented for being registered as a trademark next slide please so uh, continuing about the absolute grounds of uh, refusal we also talk about the shape of goods which results from the nature of goods for example shape of a round chocolate for confectionery picture of banana for fruits the shape of good which is ne necessary to obtain a technical uh, result or something like a square a pin plug the shape of uh, which gives substantial value of the goods for example a three-dimensional mark representing the ornamentation on cutlery items so on and so forth next slide please so for the purpose of understanding the nature of goods and services which refer to the trademark is used shall not be used as a ground for refusal of registration next slide now uh the previous slide which i spoke about the section 9 those are absolute grounds of refusal that is if you if your particular trademark falls under any of those uh criteria which are objected under the statute 
they will not be allowed under any cause but there are certain uh, grounds which are known as relative grounds or refusal relative grounds or refusal means uh, those are the kinds of objections which you can overcome by tweaking or by making some changes in your particular trademark so if you are able to uh, overcome those uh rejections you you are uh, you can overcome the relative relative grounds of refusal for example uh, when we talk about section 11 to uh, when we are talking about the goods and services which are not similar to the same proprietor if you are trying to uh, prove or trying to give the kind of documentary evidence or something which is uh, which are able to show that you are not trying to uh take unfair advantage or the detrimental character or reputation of an earlier trademark then you can overcome these relative grounds of refusal next slide so uh, a, a trademark can also be not registered if by virtue of any law it is uh, it is being used uh, as a passing off for uh, protecting an unregistered trademark used in the course of trade by virtue of law of copyright so when something is already covered under copyright you cannot uh, registered as trademark because uh, trademark is a different uh, kind of intellectual property copyright is for all kinds of creative uh, creations like uh, let's say art architecture culture writing uh, singing so on and so forth so they cannot be registered and the next uh, thing is we are talking about section 114 which talks about uh, no nothing in the section shall prevent the registration of a trademark where the proprietor of the earlier trademark uh, consents to the registration and the re register may register the mark under special circumstances under section 12 next slide so a trademark cannot be refused unless and until those grounds for refusal are raised in the opposition uh, proceedings by the proprietor of the earlier trademark so if you if the earlier trade uh, proprietor of the earlier trademark has already objected to the use of your prospective trademark then you will have to show ways and means as to how your trademark is different distinctive and descriptive from uh, that particular goods and services next slide please next slide please so in all such uh, questions of uh, confusion the registrar is the one who will identify whether uh, this particular trademark is uh, actually uh, coming under the absolute grounds of register uh, rejection or the relative grounds of refusal next slide so uh, these are all different kinds of statutory uh, do, uh, what do you say embargoes which are given for registration of uh, trademark and what are all the statutes which are done so uh, if if you can just uh, stop the slide show uh, uh, madhav i would like to actually say that the main purpose of describing about trademarks was uh, we are talking about Uh, the different kinds of uh, intellectual property and trademark is the kind of intellectual property which is used to differentiate your goods and services from a competitor's goods and services so what happens if somebody infringes your trademark uh, you can file a, what do you say a cease and desist notice you can uh, send a legal notice saying that you have to cease and uh, from uh, what do you say using uh, the trademark which is owned by you and also you when you are talking about a counterfeit or something like that you can identify if somebody is trying to pass off your trademark goods and uh, services under their trademark name so you can find out counterfeits and you can by with the help of in private investigation agencies you can impound those goods you can destroy those goods you can also uh, go to the high court and file a uh, injunction and obtain a stay so that these people do not destroy your uh, uh, trademark which is protected and uh, uh, as your statutory right so this was the reason why this particular session was told so in case anybody has any questions so far you can ask me if not uh, this is all i have to say about trademark uh thank you purnima it was a what do you say um uh, intense session for all of us and uh, i believe if nobody has a question we have already crossed the time we'll conclude for the day and we'll meet next month
Any sure. question? I don't think there is a question. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Purnima. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.